good morning one and all on behalf of kamaraj college of engineering and technology institute department we welcome all the participants to this webinar on iot uh, iot in automotive industries uh, our chief guest is mr g garudaya uh, he is working as electronics engineer in bmw and uh, we welcome you sir uh, now i request our beloved achiv dr ras please go sir to introduce the chief guest uh, thank you ramesh sir First of all, I welcome our today's guest speaker, G. Karudayar, working in Vienna, Austria, in BMW car industries. is a very good resource person. His curriculum bit says like that. So today, IoT is a wonderful technology. it is needed to all over india or all over the world especially its application in all the field we know that today's automotive industry is a growing one in future uh, driverless cars are coming because of the iot technology i think it is a right topic and right forum and right audience are there i welcome all the audiences so from various uh, field like faculty members college students both second year third year and final year even uh, the fast out students then faculty, faculty members from members. various so the our chief guest karudaya has completed his be degree in electronics and communication engineering from psr engineering college sivakasi in the year 2012 then he finished me in embedded system specialization in satyabhama themed university chennai in the year 2015 then he completed mba degree from anna university chennai in technology management in the year of 2017 his employment profile is from 2015 to 17 he was worked in lipson solutions as iot developer the company is in chennai then 2017 to 18 he worked in ot morphia as an iot security engineer in this new delhi company then presently he is in bmw as a position of automotive electronics engineers in coimbatore his uh, responsibility is developing pmw autosar model so with this uh, small introduction i hand over the session to our chief guest karudayar sir welcome sir to start the session thank you sir thanks for the introduction uh, thank you sir Sir Garudaya, sir, uh, before, uh, can you please share your screen and uh, speak, sir? Yeah, uh, one minute. Yes, sir. Uh, so before starting the session, we have few instructions to the participants. Participants, kindly mute your uh, microphone during the session, and it will be given with the feedback form uh, only at the end of the session. And we'll be giving enough time to fill the uh, feedback form. Uh, once after filling the feedback form, you will be receiving the various certificate within uh, three days. Uh, so we kindly request all the participants to wait until the end of the session to uh, get the feedback forms uh, sir karudaya uh, sir the session is here. thank you sir. yes sir can you able to see my screen uh, yes sir we yes, are sir. Yes. yeah thank you thank you thank you so much yeah i'll start from now yeah thanks for the introduction first um i had a five years experience in iot and recently i'm working as automotive electronics engineer in bmw so today my plan for this webinar is automotive electronics and iot in vehicles so this is a general plan of one slide the first 10 minutes i have i have plan to talk about automotive electronics and another 10 minutes the discussion about the role of iot in automotive and the, the next one is industry 4.0 i have plan to cover and the very important topic in the iot iot security i have plan to cover for 15 minutes then we will discuss about the 
protocols and which all other things technically we are using inside the iot and mainly related with the automotive electronics then depends on our questions and clarifications according to that i will plan my webinar and um, uh, to everyone whenever you have a questions please type it in a chat message and we will discuss about the all the questions in the end of the session so first you can see that one and you then one question will come to your mind where you can find the electronics inside the car this is a simple image by seeing the electronics rolls inside the car so now before starting this session and everyone knows about the car what is car and how the car is working and everything so this seminar goal is not to talk about what is car and how the car is working so the complete um, the discussion is going to happen about what's happening inside the car how the communication is happening why we have to discuss about the automotive electronics so previously in the complete world if the car means completely mechanical and electrical parts so why we have to discuss about the electronics and where this field is moving towards and where it will be after 10 years that is a discussion for the next one hour so see this image and we have to come back to this slide again and again whenever we are discussing about the new technologies and first let's i will start with what is automotive electronics because first our topic is automotive electronics the automotive electronics are specially designed electronics so already we knows about the electronics the commercial electronics we have industrial automotive and military and you can see the temperature ranges how the industry has designed and defined for to use the electronics so think so see about it commercial electronics whatever we are using inside our home it will always starts from 0 degree celsius and industrial minus 40 degree celsius industrial in the sense automotive also will come there but other than rubber batteries and something else also will come in the industrial but automotive we need that uh, components whatever we are designing inside our automotive field always will start from minus 40 to 125 and military minus 55 to 125 so by seeing this automotive electronics and seeing this picture one question will come in our mind why we can can we directly use the military electronics instead of automotive electronics yes we, we can use it but the problem to use the military electronics and automotive electronics is cost wise the cost wise military electronics is more than automotive electronics that is the reason we are going with the automotive electronics okay then the next question is why we are discussing about the automotive electronics why because in 1940s and 1950s everything is a mechanical completely 90 percentage is a mechanical components 10 percentage is electronics and in 1970 to 80 around uh, third, 20 percentage is electronics and 80 percentage is mechanical and around 2000 2020 now it's 40 percentage is electronics and 60 percentage is mechanical as the hachodis are mentioned in future we are moving towards the driverless car in the driverless car and those things around 70 percentage will be in electronics and 30 percentage only in the mechanical components so that is the reason this automotive electronics topic is the current higher level topic right now and we can divide this automotive electronics growth in a different phases the first one is the phase one introduction of electronics in non-critical application so you can think about in, in the way of 1980 to 2000 so there there was only the information about the driver information and uh, entertainment there was no intelligent very less intelligent electronic system and there was no impact on engine performance in that time there was no support to the driver driver has to start the car and he have to give all the inputs to drive the car that was the first of phase one very less of electronics has introduced inside inside the car but in the phase two electronics started growing so the electronics supports the critical applications so what kind of critical applications we have think about when we are driving the car first one is the safety very important thing is safety is the main critical applications and still the automotive electronics is working safety in after 10 years also the same kind of word will come and the emissions the comfort to the passengers and comfort to the drivers those are will come under the phase two so that time electronics started growing and electronics started to support the critical applications so the very important heart of the car is engine so the engine optimization and the fuel entry inside the car and the second option is active and passive safety already you people knows currently what kind of safety we have inside of the car abs esp electronic stability 
and airbags these all are the things and driver information and entertainment in the phase 2 so what kind of driver information and entertainment is necessary so related with the gps where my car is going on where i parked it so all our informations about the car and parking radar how to parking assistance system how to park smartly park my car and all other informations and currently all other google and apple and those people are collecting the information about our own data the same way car also has his own data as like a human and the comfort when we are moving the topic to comfort the mainly for the cruise control cruise control automatically we will set our car our tracks or something else in a one level setup speed and automatically it will take care of everything and keyless entry so previously we have to open and close the car by using doors but currently we have a buttons so by pressing the buttons automatically we can enter and we can just start the car by using everything and completely intelligent electronic system so related with these all the things why were seat control everything is automatically started to control and these all of the will come in the phase 2 so there is the electronics slightly supports the critical application in the phase 3 electronics control critical applications so completely electronics taken care of the control in the phase 3 the first one is full engine control start and stop cycle and your hybrid vehicles now currently we are moving hybrid engine and plus battery and battery management system and your fuel control of engine performance and traffic congestion warning and where the traffic is more in what kind of routes we have to take by using google and other cloud platforms amazon and microsoft these all are the cloud platforms people are started to help in the electronics field and these all are the sensors a lot of sensors were involved inside the car to find out the collision and all other things so this is in will come under the phase 3 and control of driving and driving skills what do you mean by the control of driving and driving skills the electronics and other things can completely taking care of the driver roles and the phase 4 is the future but not it's the, this phase 4 is not for now it's a fully automatic driver so in a, within 10 to 5 to 10 years we can maximum say that definitely we can see the driverless car in the road but currently there is no driverless car in the road according to the survey but still testing is going on related with in the phase 4 so think about the improvement of electronics in phase 1 and phase 2 and phase 3 and phase 4 the phase 4 introduction of electronics phase 2 electronics supports the critical application phase 3 electronics taking care of the control of the critical application and phase 4 is the now currently we are in the phase 3 we are moving and we are trying to move towards the driverless car so we have a lot of technologies were involving inside the cars and now the next question is we are talking about the electronics who is taking care of all these responsibilities we are talking about the engine performance will support the driver and uh, the making the comfort and who is playing the main role here and we need just now we discussed about heart of the car is the engine and the, then we need a brain to operate the brain of the car is is completely related with the electronic control unit before seeing the electronic control unit first we will see the automobile applications how this electronic control unit the brain of the car has introduced and how he entered into the automotive electronics so the first this one started from the volkswagen so volkswagen guys in 1968 they have introduced a smarter than a carburetor we can say one word called carbuter car and computer in 1998 it's a small pc inside the car currently in the current world in 2020 we are calling this term is called as a ta- dashboard in the bmw car where you are seeing all the comfort all the information will be there in the dashboard itself but the what 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 is the use of this computer you can think in the way car and computer car we have where is the computer so that is called computer it's a compact size it supports bluetooth capable usb capable wifi capable your gps gps navigation and you are all your entertainment related video capable music capable and everything will come after 1998 the car and computer the word is called as computer in 1968 volkswagen have introduced one small brain currently we are calling as a electronic control unit but we can say it as a engine control unit as well they have introduced in 1968 mainly to control the fuel injection so in 1968 it started with one application and think about it 1968 we used only one ecu do you know do you can you able to guess how many modern ecu we have currently right now in the bmw car around 100 ecu so think about it 
how much of how many brains and how many different type of functionalities how many different type of electronics applications we introduced in the car right now what we are using not only the bmw volkswagen and mercedes benz and rd and now in the modern cars is have more than 40 to 100 ecus inside the car you know the plan in before 2030 we are expecting 130 ecus inside the car what do you mean by ecu electronic control unit or if you are purposely controlling the engine and we can call it as a engine control unit so generally we can say that this is a controlling unit of our car and when we are talking about car mainly this automotive in the main automotive field automotive electronics mainly focusing on a three applications the one of the application we have seen is a car computer car with computer controlling and seeing all the information data in front of us that is called dashboard the next next application the second second application is telematics telecommunication and informatics so what do you mean by this telecommunication and informatics maybe whatever the word we are talking here nothing is new in the electronics field everything it's already resides on a different field but we are combining everything and we are talking about as automotive field so the iot machine learning and industry 4.0 whatever we are going to see the upcoming slides and upcoming information it's nothing is new and it's not related with automotive electronics everything all the fields are there we are combining everything even including the telecommunication and informatics it's a technology for sending and receiving and storing the information so the telematics then iot automatically will come inside the picture of this telematics so sending and receiving the information who will send the information the our automotive field the car will send the information so the car in the sense do you think separate car the complete car will send the information no our electronic control unit will send the information do you you can think in you can imagine in the way we have around 40 electronics control unit for different different applications for every different application will pass the informations and it will receive the information from the outside of the world and it we will store all the information inside of the cloud then automatically we are covering the iot so this is telematics mainly the telematics usage is vehicle tracking and wireless wireless vehicle safety communication and emergency warning system and intelligent vehicle technologies car sharing technologies satellite navigation and mainly the important topics resides on the road safety so these are the places we have to talk and we have to focus on the telematics and the next application is infotainment information and entertainment it's a collection of hardware and software is the same thing related with the embedded system even embedded system is the also the definition is equal to combination of hardware and software so the infotainment it's a collection of hardware and software in automobile field it provides the audio and video content it's related with the media related so that mainly related from how we are operating music and video and other things so it's a combination of in information and entertainment so this infotainment it completely provides and receive the information related with the entertainment so we can say that connected car so the infotainment will play the main role between the connected cars what do you mean by the connected cars the same way iot how the devices are connected inside the network the same way we are going to connect the car instead of small devices we are going to use the very big devices called a car so there is is called a connected car and connected devices so these are the very main three applications related with the electronics and iot so the first one is car computer second one is telematics and third one is infotainment so according to our technology to the students what kind of courses will cover here the telematics and telecommunication mainly playing the role of in the electronics and communication the communication part will be taken care in the telematics and here in the infotainment mainly related with the cloud related parts it's related with the computer mainly playing related with the cloud computing we can call as iot computing so the cloud computing and uh, the database and big data and everything will come inside the picture of infotainment but in the telecommunication it's related with little bit related with iot medium and gateway but in the car computer it's completely based on the electronics so these are the it's only equal to the students so how they can think about the technology where they are relating with their uh, departments and we will see the who is supplying the controller so who what is this controller here so the country electronic control unit is a controller who all are frequently and major supplier for the mainly automotive field the free scale infineon infineon bosch and texas instruments mainly the infineon
Hello? Ah, yes. Yes, sir. Now only here. Yeah. yeah, can you hear me now? Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, sorry for the inconvenience. Where exactly my MUC had done up has created a problem? Okay. Type, but then we will start from types of issue. So in the electronic control unit, already we started to see the door control unit and engine control unit and human machine interface and seat control unit, speed control unit. So the door control unit will play the main role inside the locking and unlocking. And engine control unit mainly taken care in the fuel injection. And the electronic human machine interface, it's mainly taken care in the dashboard to our engine control unit. And whatever we are just clicking or passing the information via dashboard, and all the things will be taken care via human machine interface ECU and seat comfort, speed, telematic transmission and brake control model that ABS and battery management system. Currently, the battery management system is playing the main role uh, in the upcoming cars of electric vehicle and hybrid vehicles. So these are the main and major issues inside the cars. And the, the topic now we are discussing about the ECU, electronic control unit. Okay, we have a car and we have an engine, we have a ECU for taking care of everything according to electronics. Okay, we already we talked about more than 40 to 100 ECUs. Okay, we are just talking about the one ECU. How the communication will happen between the ECUs? For an example, if the door control unit wants to say something to the engine control unit, how the door control unit will talk to the engine control unit? Do you think in the way it will talk in the Wi-Fi or cellular? No. The currently inside the car, it's happening via wired. It's not a wireless. Inside the car, everything is wired. But outside the car to the other medium is only the wireless. So this is not IoT. This is general electronics. Now what we are discussing about. Okay. Now next we will see how one electronic control unit will communicate to the other control unit. So we can generally call this one as a inter ECU communication for an example just forgot about the SWOC it's a new topic called autosar we will see it in the uh, upcoming slides about autosar but first block diagram is about one ECU that is called engine control module ECM is the responsible for the fuel tank and the ECM wants to communicate with the ICM infotainment control module so when the engine ECM wants to communicate with ICM, the communication will happen on a bus the same way how the general microcontroller is working. Here we used to call as a CAN bus because in automotive field, the major protocol is called CAN protocol. So might be some of the people already heard about the CAN protocol, but already you people knows about the UR, I2C, SPA. This is a next level protocol for the automotive field. So the ECM, will send the data to ICM via CAN bus. So this is an example for one EC, one EC to another ECU. So the ECM wants to send the data to ICM via CAN bus. And if ICM wants to send the data to ECM, the same way on CAN bus. So the CAN bus automatically, the arbitration will play the main role. For an example, in all the cars, ECM is the master ECU and other issues are the slave ECU always. So all the ECU, will pass the information to ECM via CAN bus. If we will take one example in ICM wants to say that fuel is very less to the ECM and ECM engine control unit will take care of the next way of if low fuel, then automatically the ECM has to alert the driver. The fuel is very less. We have to take the immediate action. And another way is if the temperature engine temperature warning if they wants to show that and ECM based on the critical warning ECM can able to stop the car and otherwise ECM can able to take care of the another immediate action based on the application. So everything is based on the application. This is called inter EC communication and another question will come in the mind is the automotive field only rely on a canvas. No. 
so we have a can is one of the protocol and another one is lin protocol and most protocol flex ray protocol in the automotive and self driving car is going to move it's a ethernet protocol so in tomorrow is a ethernet bus and today is a can bus so the can and ethernet flex ray everything is based on the data rate how much fast the ecu wants to send the data to the another ecu okay then how one ecu will communicate with another ecu via can bus then who will play the main role in the hardware wise that is called the wire harness so in the wire harness is the third high high weight part inside the car first one is engine and the next one is the this in the way wire harness is the most heaviest the third heaviest part inside the car so this is the way one ecu has communicating with the another ecu but this rte in the above picture rte software common these all are the things are new architecture method for the communication inside the module inside the car is called autosar automotive open system architecture so previously that was a msr manufacturer supplier and now currently is the autosar so without autosar now currently none of the automotive fields are working autosar is not a new technology it's a architecture how you have to place your electronics components and your application according to software so the autosar main playing the role on the software wise so don't get confused is the autosar playing the role with the hardware no it's only related with the software this is the way one ecu is communicating with the another ecu so you can imagine in the way how you can place the 40 ecu for the normal or modern vehicle and now we have placed all the ecus in this picture how can bus is communicated so connected with the all ecus and who will get the higher priority who will get the lower priority always we will give the higher priority to the safety and emission standards for an example door lock and brake system and air bags these all other things will get the higher priority always so if door is open then automatically one alert will come so if door is open one example i am saying if the door is open and the door lock is you will communicate to the engine is you via can bus and automatically the information will go to the dashboard via dan dashboard the lamp one indication called mill lamp mall function indication lamp might be you people have seen in in your car while you are driving some light will bump up pop up that is called the mall function indication lamp how these all other things are playing role so inside the ecu what will happen so every ecu has contain a different type of memories like our normal microcontroller all the information will stored inside the microcontroller memory and the car will be taken care into the carriage and in the carriage guy will read the information from the memory so who is the responsible to store the information inside the memory as a software engineer like me we will store all the information while your car is drives so we have a different type of memory like sram ram rom flash stack everything inside one ecu so automatically whatever happens okay we will take one simple example i will tell you if for an example in the same way we will take it your low fuel warning or engine temperature warning whenever the engine temperature is playing something else some mall function and we will store some specific code inside the memory we used to call this one as a dtc diagnostic trouble code so whenever we are storing the data the mall function code inside the ecu then when you are taking care when you are taking your car in to carriage for the repairing and the carriage guy will read the information by our specific tool bmw have a specific tool audi have a specific tool related with the diagnostics so they will read the information and by reading the information the carriage guy will find out okay this is a problem inside the car we have to solve this problem they can immediately identify the problem in the carriage side and they can quickly solve the problem inside your car and they can deliver it again so this is the one of the use case of electronic control unit how he, electronic control unit helps the testing wise in olden days when you are when we are taking care of the car inside the carriage when we are taking our car inside the carriage they have they need a some more specific time to find out the problem it will take a time but currently this is not the case we are storing all the informations related with our specific is as a specific code inside the electronic control unit so we are specifically storing inside our flash we can generally call it as a ee prom we are storing very specific and critical information inside the ee prom and now currently in the world ee prom is not the word nbm 
non volatile memory and this is the way all the issues will communicate in the can bus if the can bus is uh, busy the same way the if dashboard wants to communicate but if door lock also door lock ecu also is communicating then can bus will give the priority to the door lock ecu based on the arbitration level so this is the way ecus are communicating in the can bus next we will go there it's a automotive stack protocol now we talked about that automotive electronics ecu is playing the role and data is transmitting via can bus but who is playing the back end so the uds is the protocol for it's a service can is the service protocol um, can is a communication protocol but uds is the service protocol we have a protocol j193 known but those are the old protocol uds is a UBD, uds and obd is the latest protocol which is used in the automotive industry we don't have much time to switch this slide so you can think in the way uds and obd on board diagnostics and this is another way how we are placing the ecus inside the car so you can see the obd port in 1990s after 1990s the diagnostics related with onboard diagnostics what do you mean by onboard diagnostics and offboard diagnostics in olden days if you want to debug the car we have to stop the car in the carriage and the car ignition should not be on ignition should be off and we have to debug the car that means we have to find out the mal functionalities and everything but currently in the technology that's called off board diagnostics but currently on board diagnostics while driving the car car itself will find out what is the problem car itself is a self diagnostics car itself will find out what is the problem inside that one automatically it will store inside the memory as a dtc diagnostic trouble code so this is one simple image how how we place the ecus inside the car and this is the basics of till now we discussed about the basics of automotive electronics why the automotive electronics is a hot topic right now and what all are the roles and responsibilities of automotive electronics how the function how the electronic control unit works so this is the things we have discussed okay. and we have seen it in the slides till now next we will move to next to the next technology is called industry 4.0 why industry 4.0 in the industry level again why we have to talk about the industry 4.0 in the automotive field specifically so the industry 1.0 2.0 3.0 4.0 4 the first industry 1.0 what has happened their complete mechanical st stuff steam power weaving loom those things happen in the 1784 when the industry started when we thinks about in the way without human where from from the outside world how we can get the support for the manufacturing the goods so that is the topic of industry 1.0 then after 100 hours 100 years the topic called industry 2.0 where because the one topic comes into the picture in 1970 mass production they need assembly line and how they can use the outside resources that is called electrical energy so mass production the top top topic came in the 1870 there the topic called industry 2.0 introduced then next topic after another 100 years the industry 3.0 because in 1969 electronics started so that is the reason industry 3.0 in industry 1.0 complete steam human effort industry 2.0 electrical energy we started to use industry 3.0 electronics started the picture the plc programmable logic control and uh, other things are coming to say the picture that is called industry 3.0 automation computer and electronics but not much even though we are saying automation computer and electronics but in 1969 we didn't use much automation stuff only the electronics played the main role and we the people started to know about it okay some things are there like computer but industry 4.0 right now in 2020 with the help of iot machine learning and everything currently the industry entirely looks entirely different okay why industry 4.0 is important in the automotive industry do you think humans are manufacturing the cars and uh, making in the production line no everything is made done by in the bmw we will take 5 minutes to assemble one car so with the help of machines we can say that autonomous robots so in industry 4.0 mainly the all the main technologies related with that autonomous robots your 3d advanced robotics you can say that or autonomous robots and 3d printing and mission to mission the main important thing is advanced robotics mission to mission and big data iot and 
machine learning but the one word we mentioned the cognitive learning ibm you can see that ibm introduces cognitive learning how automatically machine has to think themselves how they are deciding what they wants to do like a chatbot how currently you can take example of chatbot it related to the cognitive computing whenever we are entering into the one website one pop up is coming it's asking us how can i help you so we are saying that i need this kind of information and chatbot is replying please read this document or something else this is our rules and regulation please follow it up how the chatbot is working chatbot is a cognitive computing based on your question the mechanism of back side is actually they are thinking what kind of answer they have to provide it so future is chatbot so everything is coming inside the industry 4.0 but main role is again internet of things it's based on the smart sensor we will collect the information we will send the data to cloud that there where the topic of big data once the data is captured in the big data and based on the analysis some decision will be taken care there the cloud computing will be the playing the main role is the software as a platform or a platform as a service and all the things will coming inside the cloud computing we can call it as internet computing and advanced robotics mainly for how to take pick the product and how to fix it and everything in the automotive industry right now it's have all the companies are using the advanced robotics this is the topic of how can the automotive industry can use the internet of things next topic so now you understood the now you got the point related with first before entering the iot we can clarify the industry 4.0 why industry 4.0 is important right now and why we are moving from industry 3.0 to industry 4.0 maybe in 2070 or 80 we are expecting a tech guy industry 5.0 but there is no guess there is no boundary for industry 5.0 unimaginable things will be coming come for the industry 5.0 but industry 4.0 currently may uh, currently using in the germany and european countries in india uh, we didn't start the industry 4.0 fully but industry 3.0 but industry 4.0 is there here and there but industry 3.0 mainly we rely on the mainly of uh, plc scada and those all are things are relates on industry 3.0 okay in industry 3.0 to industry 4.0 what kind of protocol technology we are using again again the can and modbus picobus postlink protocol these all are the server client protocol we are using in the industry 4.0 and next we will go to the iot in automotive so first we have seen the automotive electronics next industry 4.0 how industry 4.0 and automotive electronics will be fit with iot so that is the reason how can the automotive industry can use the internet of things so from the internet of things first already internet of things is a common topic everyone knows about the definition of internet of things again i will say that devices are started to communicate inside the network not only device to device machine to device or device to device both are machine to machine communication or human to machine communication both are will be applicable in the internet of things internet of things it's not the invention is a innovation so already we have all the things and we have altered the technology and we are calling it as internet of things okay so automotive industry from the iot what the automotive industry mainly expecting is the predictive maintenance the industry 4.0 predictive maintenance is very very important the next one is wifi capability the wifi capability we can get it from the cellular or from the wifi medium so currently we have a mobile phone so we are getting in the internet via gprs in olden olden days it's not much might be in 2012 when we finished the engineering that time we used the term called gprs but now currently 3g 4g but industry automotive industry looking forward to use the 5g and car to car connectivity again the same in the iot in home mobile is communicating with the fridge the same way one car is communicating with another car outside the world but in home one mo mobile is it is very easy because we have a wifi medium inside the home but car is not like that car is moving out in the outside outdoor so the car to car connectivity we need definitely 3g 4g or 5g and the fleet management in the vehicle or truck how we are going to use the iot that is a challenging topic in the automotive industry so the one question is can we adapt the complete iot in all the cars answer is not so we have used the partially iot in the automotive industry let's see the another examples the first example is iot technology in the automotive industry is prevent expensive repair with predictive maintenance technology 
things in the way prevent expensive repair so currently if you are buying the bmw car because i am a bmw guy then i will say the example from the bmw if you are spending in india around minimum level is 30 lakhs to 40 lakhs if car itself preventing the expensive repair then it will be useful for the user and the customer but in olden days if something has happened happens inside the car you have to take care into the carriage and inside the carriage automatically they will put a lot of money for the services for the especially in bmw and the currently bmw high sophisticated cars service you can think you can imagine it how much we will charge the next c in the preventive expensive repair we can take care of the example of battery condition why we have to take care of the battery status because future everything is going to it's not combustion engine it's an electric vehicle already you people things in the way already government is clearly communicating to us we are going to move moving towards the electric vehicle that's a huge and vast topic in the another side but we are slowly started to adapt even bmw also started the project called battery bms battery management system and we are also spending a lot of time and a lot of effort towards the electric vehicle right now. But in European, already electric vehicle is started and a lot of people started to use the electric vehicle. A lot of charging station outside. But in India, India, it's not the case. Electric vehicle is again still a dream for India, for in our side. But still, hopefully within three to five years, definitely we will move. But according to the combustion engine, clearly communicated from our side is, we also have a project for the next two, 10 years. It's just an information. Okay, now coming back to our battery status, battery monitoring inside our, by using the IoT technology. So in car monitoring system, first we will check the battery status. Okay, we checked the battery status and the battery status data we will send to the, okay, we predicted the battery status is not good. That means low battery. And now the current condition, we have to inform to driver first because driver is the guy should know about the battery status and even though we have to collect the information about the battery status why we have to collect the information of if we, have, we can inform the driver and we can close the point there itself why we have to collect the information in the future predicting mechanism we need the our past data how in mobile phone google is collecting our information and how it giving the proper things for an example you can take example of where you park the car Two days before I parked in this mall and parked in this location and parked here and two days before or one week before I traveled in this road, Google is collecting all the information and it will give the information to you where the road condition is good, where the traffic is very less. All the information you will get it from the past data like our memory, how the human is running, human is living with the, our past data the same way. But now IoT is detecting, our chip is detecting, low battery is detected and alert sent to the driver and the owner and data is transferred to the cloud. There the machine learning algorithm predicts whether the battery will run low still or not. And this system will process the input and prepare advice for the driver. And the driver information, it's not like mobile, automatically will pop up in the dashboard. And then one more way, if, if the customer needs, a driver also needs information via message or what WhatsApp message or something like that in the mobile that is also possible based on the machine learning algorithm. Okay, why that word machine learning now comes inside this PPT and this slide. The one word from the industry, the two sides of the coin is one side is IoT, another side is machine learning. So without now currently with without machine learning, IoT is nothing. IoT, IOE, everything, Internet of everything. So this is one example, battery condition is detected, low battery predicted and data will send to the cloud. The same way data sent to the alert to the uh, driver as a message or something else, but the same thing will pop up in the dashboard and mall function indication lamp also will glow inside the car and who all are sitting inside the car, they can understand what is the problem. So different kind of indication will be present inside the dashboard and notification system sent to the driver warning as a low battery charge. Now, based on that driver can be able to take action if it is a hybrid then automatically we will switch to the engine for a, some period for a travel or otherwise they have to immediately go to the charging station to charge for our battery this is one example second one is diagnostics and prognostics predictive maintenance just now we talked about predictive maintenance the predictive maintenance very important based on the past data you can see this image how the vehicle monitoring is happening the battery fuel pump starter motor how the real-time notification currently text email or in vehicle in vehicle means dashboard or remote link this is the way iot is helping 
to the automotive industry mainly to the driver assistant system we can call it the predictive maintenance algorithm is working based on this by using the machine learning and next one is the very very important because we have very less time uh, the important topic right now and the hot topic for the elon musk as well in the tesla and the tesla is keep and they are working past 3 to 4 years actively in this area the topic is called over the year over the year update the over the year update is already achieved in our mobile phone if whenever the android os wants to update the android guys and the, they are not asking from the showroom to give your mobile and we will update your os no not like that they already send the os in the cloud whenever the user wants to update the os they can update it that is the term called over the year update the same way for in automotive industry is called sota in the ota because software over the year update why this software over the over the year update is very important and we are looking at the future technology for automotive industry the reason is currently we are updating our os or firmware or um, our software inside our ecu in carriage only but in future if something goes wrong inside your car and the bmw if for an example you bought one you are going to buy one bmw car something is you are driving the car and something is wrong i we are finding it something is wrong something is firmware is doing a malfunction and if you want to update the firmware then you no need to take your car into the garage automatically we will send the update via bmw cloud then you can download the firmware or software from bmw cloud and automatically it will get updated inside the car ecu so everything will be updated inside the car ecu so there and how the data will send to the cloud how we can download the data from the cloud and everything will be taken care by wifi technology so there we need a iot so you can see one example slide from the vector how they have a plan to do the software update one is via wired another one is over the air wire is possible in the carriage you have to take care you, you have to take your car inside the two carriage and we will update the software but in the over the air update that is not needed you no need to take your car to carriage or some other remote location you can still running your car automatic update will happen but we need the network so this is the software over the air update but in generally in mobile and other things in iot saying that ota but we generally used to call in the automotive industry this name called sota so connected cars i on iot technologies we need the wifi and everything till now we talked about this we don't know much time to discuss about the detailed these things next we will directly jump into the important term in security and still we have seven minutes automotive iot security i will first in up my technical information so in the iot field we are sharing the information here and there and lot of data are going on here and there so in the car also we have a plenty of data even we can say that millions of data are there inside one car so how we will protect our data by using some security if someone steals you can think about that if now we are moving the moving towards the technology called without driver even driver is also going to be a passenger in future in the self driving car in that if hackers comes inside and they can if they can start to operate the car then think about it what will happen they can make accident they can steal all our data they can confuse com completely confuse the electronic control data or they can change whatever they want so how we will protect that data in automotive field so what kind of algorithm will play the main role this is not only for the automotive field it's for a complete other field as well but automotive is the major field and automotive field holds a lot of data that is a reason security is very important in the automotive field first security risk for a connected car what all are the security risk we will feel first theft of personal data vehicle theft connection risk and mobile application security vulnerabilities because now currently we are giving the possibility to mobile will connect with the car and manipulation of safety critical system related with the safety ecu and designed in security failure so mainly we will see what kind of layer this is applicable in all the automotive companies what kind of layer we we are using to protect our data the first one is security interface that is related with your wifi or 3g 4g or cellular or lora low range low lora means lower range 
and the next second is security gateway this gateway is a separate ecu because if you have a more than 40 ecu you need one common ecu to communicate with other ecu the gateway ecu is the main ecu inside the car will communicate particularly with some specific ecu and third one is a secure network secure network is the can bus or flex ray bus or lin bus or most in future is a ethernet bus and secure processing how we are securely processing our data how we can securely process our data in olden days in julian caesar period they used the word called encryption the same way in automotive field we also using encrypt and decrypt the messages by using keys but in olden days we use the 8 byte keys currently we have plenty of 32 byte keys because the reason is blockchain is also coming into the picture so currently sha1 sha2 mds lot of algorithms are playing role inside the automotive industry see one we have two kind of asymmetric two kind of encryption mechanism how we are protecting our data one is asymmetric another one is symmetric so asymmetric and symmetric plain text we are changing to the cipher text plain text in the sense my data i have one sensor data for an example my critical application i want to send the data to cloud then i will change to cipher text how we are communicating in whatsapp the same way but before sending to the cloud i want to do the encryption by using key so in asymmetric we are we will use the two keys one is public key another one is private key public key is the it will be applicable for all the people but private key is completely encrypted it will be only applicable for the customer so in the sense oem original equipment manufacturer who is oem here bmw rd mercedes benz these guys are the oem and bosch and delphi and other companies are the suppliers in this picture so the public key is applicable for the all the people who whoever want they can use it but private key is only for the oem but in symmetric key the complete communication is only happen via public keys only so automatically the pop up will come in your mind asymmetric encryption is the most secure encryption currently we are using inside our car in rsa dsa and ecc elliptical curve cryptography and we have only 3 minutes and this is the final slide from my side it's a vehicle to vehicle communication and vehicle to infrastructure vehicle to vehicle communication means one vehicle will communicate with another vehicle and vehicle to infrastructure means vehicle will communicate with the road think about in the future how the vehicle will communicate with the road and how the vehicle communicate with the traffic signal so this will be applicable this will be achieved by lte 4g 3g or lora or um, our wifi are based on the Uh, technologies whatever will be available in the country so this is a final so the the future topic in the automotive is driverless car in the driverless car vehicle to vehicle communication and vehicle to infrastructure will come into the picture and the parallelly electric the according to the battery related um, electric vehicle will play the main role in the next 5 years or 10 years industry 4.0 keep in the mind industry 4.0 iot machine learning big data these all are the and cloud computing these are the five technologies going to rule the automotive field in the upcoming years within 5 to 10 years we can see all the cars are intelligent cars and smart cars so this is the information from my side and thanks for joining do you have any questions hello hello anyone have questions anyone have send any message on the chat i am getting some questions from audience do you have any uh, doubts or related with which technology where we will use so i completely shared related with uh, what are the technologies are there within one hour i just made a simple presentation related with uh, um, what are the technologies we are using in the automotive industry yeah surely i will share the ppt and uh, via the organizer any other things you need from my side 
yeah the one question first question related with the tools for automotive the tools related with automotive is plenty and currently every manufacturer original equipment manufacturer are using their own tools and the vector and uh, yeah, semiconductor guys the vector and the nxp and st microelectronics those guys are having the common tools related for a specific purposes we have a plenty of tools for diagnostics and for autosar autosar ec works and d space these are the open tools but open source tools are very less in the automotive field because every original equipment manufacturer are using their own tools and one more question is how does mission to mission learning helps in the automotive industry yeah mission to mission learning mainly related with the safety and again the main important things for safety and the one mission that means one car has to communicate and provide all the information relevant information not all the information relevant information to the another car for an example the related with I, i traveled in this way this is my past experience please use this experience for your travel as well so this is the way the communication will happen between mission to mission so there very important technology is called machine learning because machine learning algorithm is going to play the main role in the m to m what we have to learn to enroll this field so the main learning for this one automotive is a very vast field already i told for the first two itself so you can be as a software engineer or is a carriage guy or you can be in uh, a tools developer because mainly you can be a software developer or you can be a base software developer or you can be a stack developer but uh, if you want to become a software developer c language we are using the main language c and python no, other than that we are not using any other languages if you want to tool developer then perl java jcap those all are the languages are very very important and uh, the impact of aa in this field is um, in from 2020 onwards everything is completely going to be on aa all smart brains everything will be on aa that's why i told in kind one side is aa another side is other side is machine uh, internet of things so the impact of aa is huge the we can't say that only the aa will back in this in this particular uh application the ai will be there in all the application related with the electronics from here onwards we can't avoid the ai hereafter that is a main important word from my side for this automotive opportunities in automotive it's a very good question um, future job opportunities currently in 10 years before automotive only focused on mechanical and electrical guys but currently we have plenty of opportunities for the electronics guys whoever is coming from the electronics background the reason is communication related they have to work on it and electronics related the guy should know about the embedded system so i am from the embedded background from my own experience whatever i learned in the embedded system and electronics i am just up doing and applying in this field so currently former engineer and tool developer and base software developer auto sar engineer automotive open field uh, these all are the job opportunities for electronic for electronics guys so currently already i told 60 percentage completely taken care right now by electronics then think about it now the automotive is not for the mechanical guys it's mainly for the electronics guys within 5 years we will occupy the 80 percentage of the field because mechanical parts are getting freezed but still r&d is going on very less lot of research and development is going on mainly related with the electronics and communication but even electronics triple e and cse all these guys can able to easily enter in the automotive electronics field that's we can call it as a core field right now so any other specific questions i'll share the ppt or uh, do you need any other info from my side and uh yes sir uh, is then uh, ramesh sir uh yes sir Uh, yeah my uh, presentation uh, is over uh, thanks for the uh, joining and thank you so much uh, hopefully uh, uh, you got the information related with automotive electronics field and the yes, impact of automotive yes, electronics and other things uh, yes sir actually we have to thank you for the wonderful session uh, in uh, on iot in automotive industries uh, hopefully uh, all the participants have got uh, much knowledge in the uh, automotive in iot industry and uh,
before entering to the vote of thanks uh, i request the participants uh, to uh, fill the feedback in order to get your e certificate and we'll be sharing we'll be giving your e certificate within 3 days after filling your feedback form uh, make sure to fill the feedback form before 1 pm uh, now i request engineer basically moses from the uh, to uh, give vote of thanks Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Arudya, uh, we thank very much for your uh, acceptance to share your expertise towards your uh, automotive industries. We have gained so much. Basically, uh, sir, my voice is not that good, sir. Hello. 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 Wesley, sir, you can proceed. Hello. Hello. Wesley, sir, you can talk. Wesley, sir, it is audible now. Thank you, Karodia, uh, for accepting our request. We have gained so much information regarding your field. Thank you. We are looking forward to your uh, support in the future coming. Thank you. So, thank you, Karodia, sir. So, on behalf of our uh, Kamaraj College of Engineering Technology and our department, I express my sincere thanks to you because uh, you are maintaining the time. Uh, keep up the time in a short manner then you presented a lot of points especially technical points which is needed to all the students yeah, so, thank you thank you so much uh, these are the areas surely ec students are working means they have to easily get the job with this field yeah uh, thank you sir in future also we will contact you regarding we have to go on more depth yeah sure sir sure in automotive thank, thank you sir. thank you thank you so much sir thanks for the opportunity thank you Thank you, sir. Thank you, Gurudeva, sir. And uh, dear participants, we have posted the feedback link in the chat conversation box, and uh, as well as we have shown in the slide also. Uh, kindly make sure to uh, fill the feedback form before 1 p.m. Thank you, and we'll we'll keep these slides active and the feedback link active until 1 p.m. Thank you. Thank you, one and all.